Introducing first the challenger. He boxes out of the red corner, wears black with silver trim. Weighed in eight stone nine pounds, four ounces. From nine contests, eight wins, four wins inside the distance, and one technical draw. He remains undefeated from West Ham, London, Lethal, Lucien And across the ring stands the champion. He boxes out of the blue corner. He wears white with black, red and silver trim. He weighed in eight stone, nine pounds, two ounces. From 12 contests, 11 wins, four wins by kill and one draw. He stands before you as the reigning and defending champion, super bantamweight champion of Great Britain and the Commonwealth. Undefeated from Lichfield, Brad the Blade Foster. Gentlemen, you've had your instructions in the dressing room. You know what I expect of you. Follow my instructions at all times. Defend yourselves at all times. Such gloves, good luck. Referee Phil Edwards with a final instruction to these two undefeated professionals in what promises to be a cracking contest for the British and Commonwealth Super Bantamweight titles. Second down. So we're underway. 12 three minute rounds in the Super Bantamweight division with the British and Commonwealth titles on the line. The boxer wearing the white trunks trimmed with red and grey and black is the champion, Brad Foster. 21 years of age, from Litchfield in Staffordshire, competing in his 13th professional contest tonight. An undefeated record composed of 11 wins and one draw. His opponent, a challenger, Lucien Reed, in the predominantly black trunks, is also undefeated. Contesting his ninth bout tonight. Eight wins. Four of those wins coming inside the distance and a technical draw in his last contest after an accidental clash of heads left him with a cut over the right eye which caused the contest to be stopped. Reed has got a problem, uh, a problem in the past Ronald, with, cuts, with cuts, so we've got to watch it here, especially when they get in close quarters. But he's in against a very, I think, a, a skillful champion in Brad Foster. Incredibly, he's had no amateur experience, but um, his skills are very good indeed. He's a very good counter puncher, seems fairly compact. But there, the little right hand over the top there, you see. And when he gets into short and mid range, he's very, very effective. But the way he does it also behind his jab, you know, he's, he's, he's pretty effective, is Foster. And I have been very impressed with him. I've been really looking forward to this contest because I rate Lucy Reed, he's a good fighter. But Foster, for me, he's shown me skills in the past winning this title. Yeah, I've been very impressed with him. Second defence of the vacant title that he won against Josh Whale. First defence of the Commonwealth crown he won last time out against Ash Lane. Said that his aim is to win the Lord Lonsdale belt outright which would mean defeating Reed, who was just pinned with a terrific left jab, the right hand over the top, wasn't too far away, Reed misses with a flashing hook, and then one more successful defence after that, but he said his focus is solely on defeating a man in front of him to edge ever closer to that ultimate goal of winning a Lord Lonsdale belt outright. Looking to target the body of Reed. Reed, eyes wide and concentrated on the man in front of him. One of the, sorry, Ron, I was just say one of the problems that Reed will have in this contest is he launches his attack from a little bit too far out, and he can't afford to do that against Foster. Foster's a very good counter puncher. You see, there's an example there, just launching the attack, misses the target, and that's when Foster will counter him. So he's got to be a little bit more measured as Reed, with his lead and especially, he can't afford to launch from too far and fall short. The body a few moments ago from Foster now operating the style four once again. Switch hitter. Some adeptness is Brad Foster who's demonstrated that ability in the opening round. Second time, round two.
to the second round then with Brad Foster's father Martin giving the instructions over in that blue corner he's the trainer of the British and Commonwealth champion and even though as you pointed out Richie no amateur experience whatsoever but as a former world kickboxing champion winning nine world titles at four different weights in the amateur ranks 59 fights 57 wins just two defeats and both of those he said were debatable he said that he practiced amateur boxing from the age of 11 and his hands were the strongest part of his game in the kickboxing discipline well he's developed a um, very good technique hasn't he um, as he picks up a little nick yep we've got a cut the over the eye, left yeah. eye of brad foster Beautiful right uppercut landed from Reed. Foster will be aware that he's cut now. Just perhaps look to keep that optic out of harm's way for the remainder of this round. Good right hand landed from Lucien Reed right onto that injured eye. Yeah, better from Reed. He's been more accurate with his work. Foster for me is very dangerous with his left hook as Reed's coming forward, so Reed will have to watch out for that. Well, as long as Reed, Reed can keep his distance with those long straight shots, if they're hitting the target, maybe that's the way he should be boxing here. But he's having a better round. He's not allowed Foster to get to him too much. It's all in the accuracy. Reed, uh, long straight right hand. And he's continuing to target that injured right, left eye. That Brad Foster's endured in this round. In stark contrast to Brad Foster, who had zero experience in the unpaid code. As Lucien Reed encouraged by the injury that Brad Foster has sustained. Being encouraged by his local fans from just around the corner in West Ham. Lucien Reed was an amateur star. 2013 senior national champion in the unpaid code. A finalist the following year, losing out to Kess Asfak. The Olympian at 56 kilograms and that eye appears to be worsening as this round progresses. Yeah, it's a bad cut as well because the blood is obviously dripping into the eye. And it's been tagged once again by that accurate right cross that Lucien Reed is landing in this second round. Well, the accuracy is definitely there from the challenger. And with some good shots, it's been a dominant round for Reed. And there's that right hand again, not too far away with that one. Overhand right up, that fired in on that occasion. So straight back to the blue corner, the champion has to get that cut tended to. So referee Phil Edwards just delaying the start of the third round to remind the boxers of their responsibilities to keep their heads out of harm's way. Lucien Reed is really looking to quicken the tempo in this contest, having seen Brad Foster sustain that eye injury, which has been confirmed that it was caused by an accidental clash of heads. That's the fate that befell Reed in his last outing against Indy Sanger at the Royal Albert Hall back in March when the contest was stopped. In the third round, when it went to the score, it was a technical draw. Break, no position to continue, such as the extent of that cut. Well, determined by the ringside medic. Well, we mentioned the amateur credentials that Lucien Reed brought into his turnover to the professional ranks. And he said that that pedigree, he lands a right uppercut before trying to pirouette to the right. And then line up Foster in the corner. He said that that pedigree is going to be the difference in this contest. As he said during the press conference, he said, no disrespect intended. I'm going to take a look at Foster in the opening round, and then I'm going to take him apart. And as the contest progresses, my pedigree will come to the fore because I've faced every star there is as he lands a jolting left hand.
think it's a classic case of one boxer concentrating on straight shots in, in Reed with that right hand. And Foster, the champion, has got to find a way of getting close to land that left hook. I think that's his most dangerous shot. I heard his corner say right hand over the top, but for me, the left hook is the big shot for Foster. He's got to try and somehow get Reed to come over that front foot and launch the attack, make him fall in and then catch him with the left hook. But at the moment, it's the accuracy of Reed which is coming through. That was a beautiful lead left uppercut from Lucien Reed. Who Richie pointed out earlier has had difficulty with cuts. He's had also problems with fights falling through. He said that when he turned over after that glittering tenure in the unpaid code, he expected to be the British champion or fighting for the British championship within a year. But after making his professional debut back in 2015, here it's come some four and a half years later looking to seize this opportunity so that his motivation has changed in the game now he's got his son Hudson Boat he said he wants to provide a better life force and incidentally he's not letting Hudson anywhere near a boxing ring and he's a football father when it comes to the weekends on the touchline cheering on his son and he said that providing for him is the motivation that sees him pounding the roads and putting in the conditioning and all of the sparring that you have to apply to succeed in this sport. To the fourth round then. Brad Foster from the Cathedral City of Litchfield in South Staffordshire. The first pro from Litchfield for over a decade. Turned pro six weeks after his 18th birthday. When I was speaking with him in the week as to why he made the switch from kickboxing, he said, Well, this is the daddy, isn't it? More money to be made in this game, it's a greater challenge. He said, he said when he's faced with a greater challenge, well, that ups his intensity and ups his work rate and his work ethic and his intensity. He says our secrets to his success. He's willing to do things that a lot of other athletes aren't in pursuit of attaining his ambitions. Nice movement from the waist from Brad Foster to cause Lucien Reed to be wide of the mark. to run the Commonwealth title from the seasoned Ash Lane. In his last time out, Ash Lane gave him a glowing assessment afterwards and said that that is the hardest I have ever been hit. I felt every shot. As Lucien Reed looks for the right uppercut once again, but he said that Foster did a terrific job of controlling the distance and with his length and his switch hitting ability and his punching power, it made it a very difficult night indeed for the veteran Ashley Lane. Left hook to both body and head from Brad Foster wasn't too far away. Lucian Reed finding himself trapped in the corner. So the corner and a good job on that cut left eye. Bob Plant, man on cutsman duties over in the blue corner. Foster remaining composed, just took another flashing right cross from Lucien Reed. And continuing to shake out that shoulders and shake out those shoulders and demonstrate the loose limbed, fast fisted style. And there's so many people excited about his talent and potential. I think Reed's boxing a clever contest here, one just staying on the outside. He's not pulling forward. I spoke earlier about him. He's got to watch, he doesn't launch the attack from too far out, and he's not doing that at all. He's boxing very clever on the outside, just waiting. And that may just be frustrating Foster, but it's a clever tactic. He's bringing Foster over the front foot. And you, you suspect he's a little bit more polished on the inside, this Foster, but he's, he's 
not getting that many opportunities. Seems to be getting tied up. Into the fifth round, then. I've heard Alan Smith giving the instructions to Lucien Reed as the boxers exchange jabs. And that is appearing, working together for the first time in a boxing match. Just his tenth professional bout tonight, but Lucien Reed on his third trainer, having started out with Peter Sims, then switched to Adam Booth. Now he's with Alan Smith at the iBox Gym down in Bromley. He said that the two of them have gelled terrifically and he's learning a tremendous amount. Allied with the experience that he picked up from Sims and Booth. He said that Smith's style complements him very well in what is a thriving gym. He said that he is blending fantastically. Johnny Garton down there, Bradley Speedstock puts in appearances, Dennis McCann, the Slick, flashy southpaw said that they're all spurring one another on. And having sharpened himself at the iBox gym while he's going to showcase his talent here tonight. Head still rubbing dangerously together. Both boxers trying to turn the eyes away from the contact, but there is still plenty together on the inside with the heads. Foster doing a good job of making Reed miss. It's a nice movement, dipping at the knees and swaying at the waist. No doubt that this is a home fixture for Lucien Reed, the man from West Ham. Too far away from Brad Foster. Champion currently operating as a southpaw. The two men fencing with the lead hands. And it was Foster who landed a lovely counter shot after drawing the lead from Lucien Reed. Yeah, classic case there of both boxers trying to make the opponent lead. And there's another, there is a cut in Lucien Reed's left eye now, Ronald, as well. Dripping down the side of his face, Lucien Reed picking up a cut once again. As we've been at pains to point out, he does suffer with cuts. Lead left hook wasn't too far away, but that's a cracking left right hand from Foster. And the action heating up in the closing stages of this round. Terrific exchange to close the stanza between Foster and the challenger, Lucien Reed. Seconds out, round six. Well, it's a pulsating atmosphere here at the York Hall in Bethnal Green. Into the sixth round of this battle for the British and Commonwealth Super Bantamweight titles. Both boxers cut above their respective left eyes. Lucien Reed sustaining that cut from an accidental head clash. And determined by referee Phil Edwards in the fifth round of this bout. Brad Foster picking up his cut from an accidental clash of heads in the second round. Jimmy Tibbs was the man tending to the cut over in Lucien Reed's corner. Terrific exchange there. Lucien Reed actually led with that hook. Not the greatest of shots to lead with, but if it lands, it looks brilliant, and it certainly did. It was a super punch. And then Foster comes back with his own barrage of punches, but it's who can be accurate here on the inside. It's very scrappy. A little bit disappointed with Foster on the inside. I expect him to be a little bit better because he's more suited, he's more at home at short range, but just can't find a rhythm on the inside, getting tied up too many times. Lucien Reed again just opting to stay on the outside to try and draw the lead of Foster, then go back at him with accurate punches. And as they come together, 
not a lot done on the inside there. Brad Foster, the champion, competing in his third scheduled 12-rounder tonight. Completed to beat 12-round distance on one occasion. Plus, he scored a stoppage in the 12th round when winning the Commonwealth crown and defending his British title against Ash Lane last time out. First venture over the championship distance for Lucian Reed. He's been eight rounds on one occasion. And then it's physical on the inside. Right hand wasn't too far away as Brad Foster pirouetted to ring stance. He was pinned by a left from Lucien Reed. Plenty of fainting in evidence from both boxes. Foster making Reed for short of the mark with the jab. Again, tempting, teasing. Lead left hook goes over the top from Lucien Reed. Brad Foster didn't pull the trigger on his counter that he thought about. Again, Reed just getting the better of the exchanges there in terms of making Foster lead first and then going back at him with, with the counters. Occasionally, Foster just waiting a little bit too long. And Reed's not coming over that front foot, or when he does, he certainly is a little bit more accurate with the straighter punches. So Brad Foster wrestled to the canvas on the bell. Phil Edwards immediately in position to say that it was no knockdown. And the VT team just illustrating where the cut occurred, sustained by Lucien Reed in the fifth round into the second half of this British and Commonwealth title fight. Very keenly contested affair indeed. Despite their differing roots into the sport of professional boxing, both of these men bound by a common occupation outside of their boxing because both of them work as personal trainers. Nice left jab landed by Brad Foster. Foster coaches clients as a personal trainer, teaching them boxing as the cornerstone of his fitness regimens that he shares with his the people that he's training. Lucien Reed does similar. He's also a personal trainer as a right hand wasn't too far away from Brad Foster. He also coaches boxers down at the Kent Golden Gloves, giving something back, sharing his experience. Good work that was from Foster, who's actually, you know, hands back towards the ropes and then turned and switched, you know, quite a negative position into a positive one. Then he went forward and scored a couple of good shots there, Foster. Good bit of boxing. Reed, for me, with those straight shots, he has to be accurate, Ronald. He can't afford to miss the target. That's what Foster, he preys on that mistake from his opponents. If they miss the target with those straight shots, then he comes back with a fast counter. Right uppercut was landed on the inside from Lucien Reed, but it was countered immediately by a shot over the top from Foster. Foster looking for the counter once again, but wasn't able to find the mark after he made Lucien Reed miss. And again, Phil Edwards having to have a word with both champion and challenger. About keeping their heads out of harm's way. There, making a rare mistake, just missing the target, coming forward and just falls in. Reed really didn't punish him there. Nice left jab landed by the challenger. Continuing to trigger those feints. An effort to draw out the lead. In addition to his work as a personal trainer, Brad Foster also works in a supermarket, preparing the online deliveries for customers. He says he hopes to put all of that other work behind him if he can continue his rise up the professional ranks and dedicate all of his time, energy and focus. Beautiful two-shot counter 
from Lucien Reed. Made Foster miss and then snaked out to Cobra quick punches, catching the incoming champion. So into the eighth round then, remember Lucien Reed only completed eight rounds once. Oh, that's a cracking right hand which followed up a scything left and then he came through with a right uppercut through the middle. Lucien Reed, a terrific start to the eighth round by the challenger. You heard Alan Smith over in that red corner just reminding Reed that in a contest that is this close, it's a couple of quality punches that could well make the difference in swaying the judges one way or the other. Three scoring judges ringside, Bob Williams, Ian John Lewis and Terry O'Connor. It's been a very competitive affair to this point. to his boxing ambitions Brad Foster also has half an eye as he gets his legs in a tangle with Lucien Reed also has half an eye on Hollywood and his boxing career comes to an end designs on being pint-sized action hero and how many boxers have done that down the years Tony Bellew former WBC world champ in that prominent role in Creed whole host of others including Muhammad Ali who played himself in the greatest back in 77 Big Joe Egan had a role in Sherlock he hopes to join their ranks at the conclusion of what he hopes will be a glittering boxing career right uppercut left hand to the body landed by Lucien Reed and you can be sure that Foster's thoughts won't be on anything other than the determined challenger in front of him Foster looking Excuse me, Reed looking for a counter right hand once again, but couldn't find the range. Nice movement from the waist by Lucien Reed, causing Brad Foster to miss. And he couldn't make the man pay in his follow up attack. Foster targeting the body, but wide of the mark, so too was the left hook came from the same flank upstairs. They both have just slowed down slightly in this round. Some of the good left hooks that have gone in there from Reed. Foster's just guilty of missing the target too many times in this round. Well, this is brand new, uncharted territory for Lucien Reed, contesting the ninth round of a professional boxing match for the first time in his career. Surpassing the eight round distance that he negotiated back in October of 2018 at the Brentwood Center. And that pointed Rafael Castillo over the eight round distance. And still another five rounds to go. How big a factor will that be? He said that he's done 12 rounds easily in the gym, but of course, as you know more than anybody, Richie doing it for the first time on a professional stage. Well, perhaps, perhaps there'll just be a couple of question marks in the back of Reed's mind as to how he is going to navigate these potential five rounds that remain. 
Yeah, you can do you can do it in sparring. Four rounds, excuse me. You can do it in sparring all day long, but it's actually doing it in, in competition. You know, under the bright lights, the nerves. And there's always that question mark in the back of your mind whether you're fit enough to do it. And uh, you feel a million dollars. Once you once you've done 12 rounds for the first time, you really feel like you can you can beat anyone. But until you do it. All that question mark, and sometimes you see boxers who haven't done it, they just hold back a little bit. Come round nine and ten, they're thinking another couple of rounds, and they just hold back slightly. That often happens. And once you've done it, you, know, you feel a million dollars. Foster winding up with a big left hook, but couldn't find a home for it. Point of the ninth round. Jason Reed, after his glittering career in the unpaid code, turned professional with quite a fanfare behind him. Made his debut at the O2 Arena and he opened the show on the Triple World Title. Bill of Jorge Linares against Mitchell and Carol Brook against Frankie Gavin. Lee Sabu winning the title against Evgeny Gradovich. And his second fight was also at the O2 on the undercard of Anthony Joshua winning the Commonwealth Heavyweight title. Since that time, the momentum has been difficult to maintain as he's just caught by a shot below the belt line. Referee Phil Edwards calling time and giving him some time to recover here. Both at the end time today could, of course, Lucian Reed. And that's a shame, actually, because just before that, Foster was having a, a good section of the round. Caught Reed with a nice right hand. Nice touching gloves there, so it was unfortunate uh, again. That was borderline as well. Lucian Reed's head swivelled backwards by a shot underneath from Brad Foster. Foster looking for the left hook. Reed just engaged in reverse gear to get himself beyond Reed's Foster's punching range. Foster keen to get onto the front foot here and close out this ninth round in strong fashion. Yeah, clear sign there from Foster. We spoke about it earlier about this left hook of his. When he's up close, he's dangerous with that shot. Sent to the tenth round then. Lucian Reed facing his fourth opponent with a winning record in this his tenth professional contest, and he's looking to start this tenth round quickly, looking for the uppercuts underneath. Foster looking to measure his man and chop over the top with an arcing right hand. But towards the end of that last round, you see Foster found a way, didn't he, on the inside, landed with a couple of shots. So he knows now he's got to get up closer to um, Reed. For most of the contest, Reed has, has kept a, a gap, box better with longer, straighter shots. Just there, in that last round, Foster got up close, landed with some good punches, and knows that he's got to get closer to his opponent. That's where he's going to have the success. Both men facing an opponent for the second time with, a, with an undefeated record. A nice left hook landed behind the right glove by Lucien Reed. Brad Foster. And then Leon Gower, who was 6 0 at the time, his first defeat. And claiming the area title, the Midlands area title. And he said that was his most satisfying win, his first 50 50 fight after facing off against Journeyman. He said that to come through that one, it really elevated his confidence and belief to an entirely different plane. Well, a clear sign there, Ronald, that no, no boxers see this fight. Foster knows he's got to get close. Reed, 
tucked into box on the outside, trying to box at range, catching his opponent as he's coming forward. But he's got to maintain a gap. Again, left up there from Foster. That's where the danger is from the, ch from the champion. Beautiful. Lead left hook landed by Foster. Arcing on a 45 degree angle as it came upwards and swiveled Lucien Reed's head. Minutes ago in the 10th round. Championship rounds await. Lucien Reed now operating as a southpaw. For a flashy lead right uppercut but couldn't find the range. Despite the applause from the crowd, I think is attempted. Quick footed burst and straight shot that followed was short of the mark. mistake there from Reed as he threw that left hand his left leg come round he came square gets away with it sort of fell in but a clever switch from Reed here to go safe for makes it a little bit more awkward for the Foster to close the gap down that's why he's done it it's just um, made Foster think a little bit before he attacks Well, both boxers made a point of rising early from their stools to enter the championship round, and it's Brad Foster trying to get onto the front foot. And then Smith and Jimmy Tibbs just reminding Lucian Reed that you may be tired, but he's just as tired as you are. That's why they call these the championship rounds, because it's so often where titles are won and lost. Who can deal? with the prospect of an 11th and 12th round when boxers have already given everything who can summon up that belief who can dig deep into their reserves in an effort to be claimed to claim and be crowned the champion and perhaps in giving those instructions and that encouragement you may have heard some profanity in the red corner apologies for the strong language that was used from Messrs Tibbs and Smith in encouraging Lucian Reed you understand the sentiment and the force of the message that they were trying to convey to him and to be fair he has responded well he's come out looking sharp and concentrated but so too has brad foster it's a great contest isn't it there's not a lot in it that's there that was a good attack he's getting closer and closer but reed isn't the sort of boxer just to hit and run you know he'll stand and trade he takes risks and the stand of his opponent, that's what's making this such an exciting contest indeed. Both of them are gambling here and there. Stepping into mid and short range and sometimes they're having to take a shot to land one. So again, despite Lucian Reeves' obvious talent and outstanding amateur pedigree as he lands with a beautiful counter right hand of the straight variety. Alan Smith was under no illusions in this, their first fight together. The heads come together once more. Foster also landed a shot during that cluster. But he said that this is a big ask and a big step up. It is crucial for Lucien Reed to keep his concentration. And he doesn't want to get involved in a punch-up. And you heard him reinforcing that message in the interval before the start of round 11. Foster with a forward ball rush. But Reed did a good job of negating it by using an effective reverse gear. Cheek a little shot landed on the break from Lucien Reed, who has turned back southpaw once again. Hard left hand landed to the solar plexus by the challenger. Fainting continues with both the feet and the hands from both boxes. Plenty of patience exhibited by both men during the course of the final stages of round 11. Corners, 10 seconds. Second down, 12th and final round. Well, it's been an absolutely cracking contest so far for the British and Commonwealth Super Bantamweight titles. 
and in the spirit, in a bid to raise both their boxes. Both corners really trying to get their message across, and as per our regulator regulations, we've got to apologise for the profanity coming from both corners. But they are trying to raise the spirits of their boxers, both of them expressing that they're incredibly tired, but they're not trying to show that to the other man. Poker faces in evidence, both of them looking to remain light on their feet and land lightning quick punches. I think the momentum is actually with Reed, I think it showed in the corner there. I think Reed's corner pretty confident their man has done enough. He was boxing well. Nice left jab landed by Reed just a couple of moments ago. Back as an orthodox boxer now. Oh, beautiful right hand, twice in succession from Lucian Reed. Started off with a jab, landed one right cross. Brad Foster's ropes, Brad Foster's back touched the ropes, and he was tagged with another right hand. Brilliant quality produced by the challenger. Approaching the midpoint of the final round. Yeah, look at the body language on all the both boxes. Reed boxing like he thinks he's won this contest. Just got to play it safe. Boxing on the outside. Having had that quality attack, Brad Foster will be aware of that. And he'll be looking to make an impression with the judges by landing some quality of his own. Again, both boxers demonstrating incredible patience as the clock continues to elapse towards the final bell. Right hand landed by Foster in the final shot of that attempted exchange. The preceding shots missed by, from both men. Yeah, neither boxer wants to make a mistake, you see. That's why they're just waiting for the other one to commit and then they can counter. But Reed looks like he's got the look of he thinks he's winning the contest. Foster's waiting a little bit too long, but doesn't want to make the mistake of going over that front foot and walking onto those straight shots from Reed. Reed still exhibiting fantastic footwork, it's fleet footed. He's Dancing his way around the perimeter of the boxing ring. Action currently at ring centre. Can somebody land an eye-catching single inside the closing seconds? There's the bell to conclude what has been an absolutely riveting affair for the British and Commonwealth Super Bantamweight titles. Brad Foster meeting an incredibly skilled challenger in the form of Lucian Reed and the local man from West Ham. Well, it is his fans who are in full voice as Reed climbs the turnbuckle to acknowledge the support he's receiving from all of the West Ham faithful. We are going to the scorecards to find out the verdict of the judges Bob Williams, Ian John Lewis and Terry O'Connor at the conclusion of what was a very skillful, hard-fought 12-round championship bout. Yeah, it was a close, close affair, wasn't it? I thought towards the end of the contest, Lucy Reed showed a lot of confidence. Obviously, with the home support. Who knows, Ronald? I think he's just done enough. But Foster sort of found his way as he went through the contest towards the end of it, got a little bit close and landed some bigger shots. But he missed with a hell of a lot, did Foster, on the inside. And just towards the end there, listening to him in the corner, he wasn't, didn't sound too confident, a little bit tired. And Lucy Reed walking around the ring. Knowledge in the crowd, he thinks he's the new champ. Well, Lucien Reed is a local lad. He's boxed here on plenty of occasions. It's his second fight here as a pro tonight, but throughout his career in the unpaid code and that win that he had in his fifth contest as a pro back in June of 2016, he says that he's never lost here at the York Hall. He's gone the 12-round distance for the first time in his career. Will he extend his run of perfection at this old sweatshop in the East End of London?
MC Craig Stephen is, is making his way up into the boxing ring. Referee Phil Edwards has got both gladiators poised at ring centre. Let's head up now and get the particulars from tonight's MC. Craig Stephen has the verdict at the conclusion of this championship bout. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what a fantastic night of boxing brought to you by Frank Warren's Queensbury Promotions. Please, a great contest to close off the show. Your appreciation for both our boxers in the ring. So we go to our judges' score totals. Judge Ian John Lewis sees this contest 1-1-6, 1-1-2, Lucian Reed. Both judges, Bob Williams, Terry O'Connor, 1-1-4, 1-1-4, a majority draw, ladies and gentlemen.